Brendan Anderson. At any age, it's hard for people to do things routinely that lead to the success of others while getting little to no credit for themselves. Additionally, it's even harder to consistently do these things and receive no credit when it's these actions of these unsung heroes that were absolutely essential to that success occurring. B.A. was this unsung hero for us offensively this year. This season, I lost count how many touchdown runs or touchdown passes happened due to a B.A. block or a B.A. route. While B.A.'s efforts went unsung to many, it never went unsung to us in the locker room or in the coaching offices. Furthermore, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better blocking wide receiver in the state of Pennsylvania than B.A. Now, this didn't mean that B.A. was adverse to being a playmaker. He just waited until some of the biggest stages of the season, the Whitfield semifinals and the Whitfield championship game, to unveil this aspect of his game. Like Eli, I could spend so much time talking about B.A. the person before talking about B.A. the football player. I will miss your focus, selflessness, hard work, dedication, style, and humor that you brought to the wide receiver group, B.A. B.A. is what they call a selfless football player and a selfless human being. Not once did he come to the sideline and say, hey, coach, I could have got the ball then, or hey, coach, can you design a play for me to do this? But more than once he came to the sideline and said, hey, coach, did you see that blocker? Challenged his teammates to be better blockers and better guys off the ball. B.A. will continue to do that and be the best for everybody around him. A lot of people see a lot of the big impact runs that you know our guys made this year, uh, whether it was Eli or Alex or whoever. Um, but what a lot of people don't notice is number 12 is downfield making some incredible blocks week after week, game after game, and is very excited to do it. If you put on the tape, you're going to see the first guy down there celebrating with someone after a big run is B.A., and the reason why that big run probably happened was because he sprung it with the block on a corner or a tackle. And there's a lot of high school receivers that aren't willing and able to do the things that he was willing and able to do week after week. Um, I was so proud of him kind of getting the monkey off his back with that touchdown versus Central Catholic. That was a huge touchdown for us. Um, but he did make big plays all throughout the season, whether it was a huge catch versus Peters. Um, it, it was just awesome to see how he approached week after week uh, and not, not getting any type of frustration with not getting as many balls as maybe he could have. Um, my most memorable moment with B.A. is definitely going to be when we came back on Saturday morning uh, with that two-day regular season Central Catholic game, and me and Coach Shearer are standing outside as all the kids walk in, and, and B.A. just has this nasty look in his eyes. And, and we're kind of concerned and worried, wondering what our mentality was going to be coming in uh, for that second part of the game you know a long game on Friday coming back in a little bumped up and he just had this killer look in his eyes and he was so focused and me and coach Shear looked at each other and we knew that that PCC was in trouble that day and he really set the tone with his physical play and his intensity the whole time um he would BA is, is I'm excited to see what you're going to do in your future um whether that be track whether that be football whether that be both um, you're going to be a joy for any coach to deal with, um, and you're going to be an awesome teammate because that's how you've been with us throughout the past few years. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to my parents, uh, obviously just for general support, but also giving me a chance to play football in middle school. I had been begging since first grade to play, and I finally got the chance in middle school, and uh, I think it's changed my life completely. I wouldn't be the person I am today. Uh, made countless relationships, friendships, and I owed all to football, and my parents let me play. Um, uh, I want to say thank you to uh, my siblings just for keeping me going, helping me, support me. Um, thank you to uh, the coaches, Coach Reiser, Coach Palco especially, and then Coach Frank, uh, my position coach. He, uh, he's always putting in extra work, making the guys feel good. He's a really good guy. Um, and then thank you to the boosters, just incredible support, keeping us going. Um, they're awesome. Um, and then Coach Kalici, he's another position coach. He's awesome. Uh, big shout out to Coach. Um, so probably my best memory is right before we run out of the tunnel as a team, right before the game, there's like the, the weight room's all quiet, super dark. Everyone's just locked in, getting focused. And then Coach Palco calls us up to pray, and we get in the big group, and we kneel down, we say to our Father, and then there's a moment after we pray where it's just silent. You can feel the energy, like everyone around that room is ready to go. And then Paco just lines us up, and you hear Hell's Bells start playing. 
and uh, me and Louie, we go in the back of the line every week. Um, I don't know why, but that's just a special thing we did, have the back of every guy on our team. We come out last every week, and that was really cool. Cooper Austin. Cooper Austin, senior year, might not have started the way that it was envisioned, but it certainly finished the way that we all thought it would. Cooper actually started the year working as a line coach, helping out myself and Coach Marcellus on the offensive and defensive lines. It was only through his hard work and determination that he was able to come back from a torn ACL and become the starting five technique in the PIA Class 6A championship game. Throughout the whole time, Cooper proved himself an inspiration to not only younger players, but to the seniors and other starters on the football team. He made us better simply by being there day after day. He made us better by showing the work ethic that is needed to succeed. He made us better when he came back by playing football at a really high level. We're thankful to have you on the football team, Cooper. We are all better because you were part of this team. Thank you for everything, and I look forward to your successes down the road. What Coop did this past season was truly remarkable. The average time frame for recovery from an ACL repair is 8 to 12 months. Coop did it in six months. Most people ease into the season with heat week, camp, and maybe a scrimmage. Coop's first action was in the Whippeal semis against North Allegheny. No big deal. He was up for the challenge. A major key to the state championship game victory was our defensive line play. In the middle of it all was Coop once again. You are amazing, Coop. Thank you for showing us all what mental and physical toughness is all about. First, I want to thank my mom and dad, especially my dad, for everything that he's done to make my high school football experience the best that it could have been. Washing clothes and just supporting me in every way that he can to make sure that I can succeed. I want to thank him. I want to also thank um, my coaches, Coach Marcellus, Coach Smiley, Coach Palco, Coach Reiser, always there for me no matter what was happening always had my back and always supported me through everything in high school. Um, and I'd also like to thank my siblings for supporting me, always giving support, congratulations after the game and everything. And also Mrs. Petrigallo for cooking our Thursday or our Friday game meals right before we played. As far as memories, I think w wing nights and just the ability to like being with your the O linemen at wing nights um, and spending time with your position group that you can really get close to. We'd eat dinner at thir Thursday night meals, our team dinner. We would play telephone at the lineman table <laughs> with each other. Um, and just memories like that, that'll stick with me forever. I think that's really special and that you can't take for granted. Joe Barry, number 76, a legend at Lebo during his high school career, whose signature walk was just as iconic as his spirit. My highlight for Joe's senior year was when we honored his old pair of cleats and burned them on the last day of summer workouts. Joe's playing career was cut short due to another concussion, but Joe continued to bring value every day. He didn't want to let his boys down. Good luck, Joe. Number 58, Michael Becker, offensive tackle. When I think of Michael Becker, the phrase unsung hero comes to mind. He was a selfless, true team player. Asked to do anything, asked to do everything. Michael became a true student of the game. Unfortunately for Michael, the numbers game again for playing time, he did not see much. So then he turned and became the best scout team player he could be. Week after week, I would thank Michael for his scout team efforts. He would study the opponent, study their best player. We would move Michael to that position to battle. He has truly a good relationship with Cade Capristo. They battled each other and then patted each other on the back and returned back to their prospective huddles. Michael will be surely missed. He was an absolute joy to coach. 
Michael Becker, to me, is what a football player is all about. He's the epitome of toughness. Coming to practice every single day to line up against a kid who is bigger than you and go at it again and again and again. His battles with Cade were something to watch every single day. One of the highlights of the season for me was it when it was all over to see Cade and Michael standing in Hershey Stadium with their arms wrapped around each other, holding on to the trophy and smiling for the picture. I'd like to thank Coach Palco for, for giving me the opportunities to better myself and better people on the team. I'd like to thank him for everything he's done for the team and helping us to help guide us to win a state title. I'd also like to thank my dad for inspiring me to play this great sport. I'd also like to thank my mom for supporting me in whatever I do. I'd also I'd like to thank coach Chip for for kind of helping me in, for kind of introducing me to the game a little bit when I first started playing. I'd also like to thank coach Riser for kind of teaching me how to take care of my body a little bit and teaching me how to kind of work in a weight room. And I'd like to thank just the entire coaching staff in general for putting me in on scout team and in games and and all that. My favorite moment from this year by far was in scout team. I was on defense and me versus Cade in scout teams. Like after plays were over, we would always like push, shove, talk to each other and all that kind of stuff. Like I would I would shove him, he would shove me, grab you know, grabbing the face mask and and like shoving it down and all that kind of stuff I, I, that's just and then it, it's it's great because it, it's 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 iron sharpens iron and all that and I feel good because I know that I got him better for for um for games Noah Buddha kicker and punter we asked a lot of Noah this year handling our various types of kickoffs he was also our punter for part of the year, earning second team all-conference with a 41-yard average. He also dropped four punts inside the 20-yard line. On field goals, he was 7 out of 10 with a long of 44. Noah, I enjoyed being your coach. Good luck at the University of Chicago. Noah Buddha challenged himself physically and mentally to be the best kicker that he could be. It's not easy to be a kicker and it's especially not easy to be a kicker under Coach Needbala. But when asked, Noah rose to the occasion and made key field goals, key extra points, and key sky kicks to put us in the best situation to win football games. Noah will do great at Chicago and will continue to be the best that he could possibly be. Firstly, I'd like to thank my parents. Um, thank you, Mom and Dad, for driving me to kicking camps all across the country. Um, thank you for coming to all my games and supporting me with all my decisions. I'd also like to thank my sister, Mia. Thank you for always going to the gym with me and being my lifting partner. Also, thank you, Lilia, for supporting me and coming to all my games. And I'd also like to thank Coach Paco and Coach Reiser. Thank you for providing lifts that make me stronger. And also, thank you for making me a better person. Lastly, I'd like to thank um, the entire coaching staff and all my teammates. Without you guys, none of this would have been possible. Um, something that I'll always remember is running out of the tunnel and seeing the crowd before games. I'll also always remember celebrations after the game and celebrating with the team in the locker room. Number 17, Tommy Boehner. Tommy, the originator of BLT, Be Like Tommy. Tommy, I can picture you, your 10th grade year. I, I can vividly remember the rack that you used to train in in the weight room and the guys that you were training with uh, over by the windows. And then, you know, week upon week of, of these workouts, knowing that there was something there, that there was, there was, there was more to you. And, and we just had to work together and figure out what exactly that was. It was so much fun to watch you come into your junior season and emerge as a spark plug, just, just, wide open all the time. Had so much fun watching you play the game 
and and not to mention the fun that we would see you have that genuine interest in fun on Friday nights, but it was the collective. It was the Monday through Sunday of you just BLT all the time. Be like Tommy. Uh, truly a guy that you could feel if he wasn't around. I think that's one of the, the most uh, compliments that I can give you that, uh, that he was just this guy that if, if he wasn't there, you felt it. Tommy Boehner. Raw emotion and a boatload of energy describe the one and only Tommy Boehner. He was so much fun to watch flying around that football field. Fearless, tough, scrappy, and always looking to pick a fight with our opponents. TB was our emotional leader. Whatever was asked of him, he did it with gusto and flair. Running down on the KO team, staying ready at tailback, blocking a field goal, causing one turnover after the other. He did it all, and he did it well. I love you, NBK. Thanks for a great ride. Tommy Boehner is what we call a program player. He was going to be the guy who was going to set the tone for your program. Tommy set the tone off the field and on. In the weight room, he was a guy who was going to do exactly what you asked him to do. You weren't going to ask him have to ask him twice. And he was going to give you all he got. On the field, it was even more evident. He wasn't your prototype where you're going to look at him as an outside linebacker, but boy, did he hit like it. For two years, as I watched Tommy, and probably before that as well, he was going to bring the wood. He was going to make that hit that was going to stigmatize the program, and everybody was going to get jacked up and excited. Uh, even though he wasn't that size, boy, did he hit like it. Tommy will continue to be that type of guy that's going to set the tone on and off the field in whatever he does, and he's going to be a very successful person because of it. And our program is going to be successful because of it as well. Tommy did a great job and will continue to do so. Uh, first off, I want to thank my parents. You know, they've like, they've really just like, they've just helped me be like the best man I can be, like on and off the field. They believed in me whenever no one else did, and they helped me believe in myself, and they had faith in me and helped me have faith in myself, which is really nice. Uh, and also, all my like relatives, like my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, all my cousins, just like always supporting me, always coming to the games, watching the games online, telling me about like certain plays they saw. Like, I just really appreciate that. And then, but especially the coaches and the community. I mean, like, what we accomplished would not even have been close to possible without the coaches. And, like, every single one of them is so intelligent. And, like, most people don't see that. You don't see that while watching the game. Like, you get that feel while, whenever you're, like, around them every day. I also want to thank uh, Mr. B and the trainers. They always are looking out for everyone like checking up on everyone, seeing Mr. B is always giving every single person a handshake, asking them how their day is. The trainers are always like caring. They're never like slacking. You can just tell that the atmosphere around football is just like everyone's all in. And I love that about everyone. So I say like one of my favorite memories uh, is uh, at Thursday night meal around the table. So me, Jack Smith and Sam Ward, we had this like weird toxic relationship where we're just like, fighting at each other like we're just like coming at each other's necks like just like getting the most like just being like completely disrespectful to each other but then like the next like 10 seconds later we're all just like completely fine like we're boys again and I mean I come to think about it like that's like what a brother is that's what brothers do and like that's honestly what it feels like like it feels like those are my brothers it feels like all the boys are my brothers and it's just like it's really nice to have that feeling I love that um also a big part of my like game routine which is like this is like a big part of my season uh i always had to get a pre-game chess w i always had a pl i played chess.com i always got a w before any time we get one out it was like i mean it was a bit of superstition but it also like locked me in which sounds crazy to say but it's just like it, it got me focused it got me in the zone it got me like thinking like I mean, it has me out on the field thinking like, all right, well, if he does this, I'm going to do this. Like, like it's a chess match in itself. Number three, Joey Daniels. We were fortunate here at Mount Lebanon to have a bunch of guys who loved football. And they truly loved football a lot. But it's another thing to have a quarterback, to have your trigger guy be a football junkie. 
Joey logged more hours onto the team's huddle account than any player I have seen. Money well spent, Joey. I truly can't remember a day he wasn't in my office watching film. Forget about the yards, the completions, and all the other quarterback categories you know, we want to we wanna talk about. Joey knew what every player was supposed to do on the field on every play. Now, that's a luxury. That's big time, and that's how you win championships. I always watched Joey after games, and it was always like he had a coach's mentality. He never really appeared to enjoy a win. He was always thinking about the next game, what he could have done better. But you should have seen the smile on his face when the clock struck zero at Hershey. I'll never forget that look. My appreciation and admiration for Joey began four years ago in the summer of 2018. I had just been hired as a wide receiver and DB coach for the Blue Devils, and the team was at Bethel Park for a pass scrimmage. During an early portion of this pass scrimmage, I was working with the JV team. The JV team was on defense, and I noticed a young, soon-to-be ninth grader who was battling to make the JV varsity roster at QB standing behind our defense. I'll never forget the look he had, straight-faced and serious like the biggest game of his life was underway. I went up to this young, not even ninth grader yet, and said, Are you having fun? This is supposed to be fun. The response I got, I will never forget. He said, Coach, I'm here to win a job. The maturity, dedication, and laser focus this ninth grader had at this point of the season and at this age spoke volumes to me. As many of you can surmise, this ninth grader was Joey, and he made the JV varsity roster as a freshman and then took the QB job his sophomore year and never looked back. Two-time team captain, all-state QB, and a two-time first-team all-conference player. I think of this exchange often when I think of Joey because I think it sums him up and shows that his above accomplishments were long in the making. He truly has been this team's unquestioned leader. It has been unquestioned because he leads by example through his hard work, toughness, passion, maturity, and drive. Joey, you're leaving this program better than you found it four years ago at Bethel Park. That is the mark of a great player. Not very many people will have the opportunity to say that in their high school that they are possibly the best person to play that position. Uh, and Joey Daniels is gonna be one of those people who down the road, when you look at it, is, is might be considered the best quarterback to play at Mount Lebanon High School. When you look at what he's been able to accomplish over his three years as a starter, um, multiple all Whippeals, all state, Whippeal champion, state champion, the amount of touchdown passes that he threw, his efficiency as a quarterback uh, when it comes to completions and a lack of interceptions. Um, it, it's truly mind boggling when you, you're able to see what he is able to accomplish over the course of three years. Um, what, what Joey may lack in size, he overcomes and dominates with intelligence, toughness, and passion for the game of football. And those things are always, always going to take you further in this game uh, than a lot of the physical stuff. Uh, what, what he's able to do for our team as a leader uh, is going to be a, a huge thing for us to, to go and overcome with him moving on uh, and the, a big void that we're going to have to fill, especially in our quarterback room. You know, he, he was always in charge. He always had everyone in the group kind of locked in and paying attention. Um, I've never been around a quarterback who has fully understood the offense. You know, as a coach, you always, you always try to teach your, your players, hey, I need you to at least know what I know. If you know what I know and what we're going in with the game plan, then we're going to be in good shape. And what great players do is, is they go on above and beyond and they're able to know more than what their coaches know and prep themselves for any possibility. And that's what Joey has able to do his senior year. You know, I challenged Joey at the beginning of the year to be a little bit more risky. I know I, I told, only throwing three interceptions in his junior year, I, that's a, that sometimes to me can be a troubling stat because you know, maybe he's protecting the ball a little bit, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I thought he could elevate his game by being a little bit more of a risk taker, which he showed this year with some pretty incredible tight window throws, tough throws while taking hits. Um, it was truly remarkable to see what he was able to do 
in his senior year. On top of that, adding the, the ability to run, you know, it's crazy to me. He got his first rushing touchdown this year and then stacked about five or six more on top of that. Was awesome with his legs. And again, it, it can't be understated what he means to this team, to this program um, as a leader. You know, I, I will always use Joey Daniels as, as the model of what you should try to accomplish as a Mount Lebanon quarterback. Joey Daniels is a prototype of making good to great. And he did it through intangibles. He did it through all the stuff off the field. He was a great worker. He was a great leader. Uh, and he made himself into a fantastic quarterback by doing all the little things right all the time. And he'll continue to do that for the remainder of his life. I'm very proud of Joey and what he does and what he will continue to do. Um, so, I mean, I guess first I would like to thank my dad because, you know, he's a main reason as, as to why um, I started playing football and why I'm so good at football. Um, I also want to thank my mom just because of her support and, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. You know, she, even when I have a bad game, she, she's still there to give me a hug and a kiss and, you know, make sure I'm, you know, still have my head up. Um, you know, all, every one of my family members, uh, all the coaches on the coaching staff, uh, you know, they've helped me out, whether it be, you know, a life lesson that they've taught me or, you know, helping me out for the game coming up. You know, I want to specifically thank Coach Spieler and Coach Dennison for, you know, turning in, turning me into a much better quarterback than what I was before they got here. Um, Coach Reiser for teaching me just, you know, how to take care of my body and make sure I'm ready to go throughout the week and, you know, just mentally prepared as well. And then, you know, I, ca I can't forget about Coach Palco, just, you know, the things that he's taught me. And, you know, he's really taught me how to prepare like a champion and he's really been the reason, you know, why I think we've been so successful. Um, well, I think what's interesting about my football career is, you know, when I started playing football in fourth grade, I, we were undefeated and we won a championship. And, you know, it's funny because, you know, I'm ending my uh, Mount Lebanon career undefeated and winning a championship. So it's funny how it all comes full circle. And, you know, I, I think that would probably be the the memories that stick out the most and then you know everything in between you know there, there's been so many good things that you know I've been able to do with my friends and you know my brothers really I should be saying but um you know just from all the times practicing you know the team meals the wing nights you know I mean I, I I've loved every moment of it number 68 Owen Halter guard when I think of Owen, one thought comes to mind. This young man has pure, pure talent as a high school football player. He is just a natural athlete. To watch him, the word wow, the factor wow comes into play. Really don't think he liked playing offense, but when he did, he was a force to be reckoned with. I think he actually just tolerated offense that would give him a break so that he go back on to defense and play. Owen is a true competitor, a jokester, snide, and I loved every moment of coaching him. He is an absolute great football player and will be surely missed. Owen was a fierce competitor on both sides of the ball as our left guard and one of our defensive ends. Never one to back down from a challenge slash scrap. He forced others to elevate their games on a regular basis with his ill-tempered approach. He played with the perfect amount of nastiness needed to succeed on the O&D lines. He went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best 6A football had to offer, and he won the battles. Often found burying opposing defenders, Owen also had a knack for making huge defensive plays from his D-end position. Needless to say, I will really miss his approach and demeanor to the great game of football. Thanks, O. I definitely want to thank my family, my little brothers, for sure. Like, it's pretty cool having them play football with me. Obviously, Connor Young made this year amazing. He's my little cousin, so that was pretty great. And I definitely want to thank uh, Coach Jenny, freshman year. He was the one that brought me in and kind of got me to start playing, got me more playing time, and he was the one that believed in me from the very start. And obviously, I just want to thank every Lebo football coach because they, without them, I'm not sure where I'd be without them. And I think that they've kind of set me up for life, and there's nothing that I regret about anything with them. 
Yeah, I definitely think my favorite memory was wing night. I mean, I've been doing it for three years, and it's kind of crazy it's coming to an end, but it's just, it was just part of the routine. It was part of football. There's, there's nothing else like it. And I think it's something else I'm going to really miss a lot is being able to play with my brother every day and play with my family, play with Connor every day. But then definitely like being able on Friday to be out on the field with both my brothers, James being the water boy, that's just something I think I'll never be able to experience again. And I, I'm glad I got it this year with the state championship and the Whitbeal that they were a part of that too. Number 75, William Harvey, guard. The best way to describe William is the gentle giant with one word missing, dominant. William was very soft-spoken and a man of many words. No. William was absolutely a dominant force on the offensive line. His assignment every week was usually to battle the best defensive lineman that the opposition had. William did this without question. And when this occurred, William always won. He was a force to be reckoned with, even more so defensively. But because of his skill set and because of his abilities, William Harvey is a very, very good football player. William will be absolutely missed in every sense of the word, both on the field and off the field. He was an absolute joy to coach. William was a two-way stud on the lines this past season. He played right guard and some right tackle early on on offense and was our man in the middle on defense as our nose guard. To help you understand how important William was to us defensively, I must explain our defense to you. We are a gap control defense in which our front seven are assigned a gap. And our number one defense used this year, base Oki. William was assigned two gaps. We dared teams to try to run up the middle on us. They tried and they failed. William would often defeat double teams and take down the opposing running back. For a man of his size, he is so athletic. What a phenom. Thank you, William. You were a total beast. William Harvey. In my opinion, there was no better defensive lineman in Western Pennsylvania than William Harvey. William Harvey's first quarter in the PIA championship game against St. Joe's Prep is a clinic tape. It is something that all defensive linemen at Mount Lebanon will be watching for years to come on how to play a double team, how to shed a block, how to act like a Mount Lebanon football player. William Harvey was the man that made our defense go. It is because of him that our defense was as successful as it is. But as good of a football player as William Harvey is, I'm more impressed with William Harvey as the person. I like to think that I was able to speak William's language. In North Allegheny, William came off the field hobbling. I asked him what was the matter, and he said, which I knew meant my ankle hurts. So William... Hopefully you don't have any more hurt ankles. Hopefully your future holds nothing but success. Come back and share them with us. Firstly, I'd like to thank my immediate family. Uh, I'm not going to name them all individually because there's like 25 now. Uh, but I'm glad that they were with me the entire way. And also I'd like to thank Coach Chip D'Alessandro for introducing me to football at a young age. And also Coach Donati who introduced me to freshman football. Um, I'd also like to thank Coach Palco, Coach Reiser, Coach Smiley, and Coach Marcellus, and the rest of the coaching staff for um, develop me, developing me into the player I am today. My favorite memory of this past year was uh, the Whitfield Championship game and the week leading up to it. Uh, my brother actually played in the Whitfield Championship game in 2000, so he showed me the game film of that before, and it got me bumped up for it, and it worked. Eli Heidenreich. Eli is one of the best three-way football players that I've ever coached, whether it's offense, defense, and special teams, putting all those things together. Um, he, he truly is one of those rare players that finds a way to make a play in any situation. Um, I think the, the, the craziest stat line that I have seen since coaching high school football is, is Eli's two consecutive seasons with a touchdown in every single game. 
I think that shows his versati versatility. I think it shows um, his mental toughness and not being denied in any situation. Um, there's a lot of times where we would call a play and we'd kind of look at each other as, as an offensive coaching staff that's on the field and say, oh, hold on to your butts. I don't know how this one's going to work out. And then the next thing you know, Eli's making four guys miss, cutting it backside across the grain, taking it for 60 yards. And it looks like we know uh, what we're doing. And, and he really made us look good a lot of times. Um, you know, talking about his versatility. I mean, you look at the touchdown. He's had a few touchdown throws, touchdown runs. You know, being able to put him on the inside and the outside. He's a guy that really could play at any spot. And there's not too many guys in high school football nowadays that, that can do something like that and have the mental capacity to handle all the things that we put on him on offense. And I know that the same type of responsibilities were put on him on defense with kind of knowing what was going on back there between him and Alex kind of getting everybody lined up as long as with the linebackers. Um, you know, Eli as a person every single day in practice has an infectious, infectious positive attitude. His smile, how he approaches practice um, was truly a joy every single day. I know that I wore on him. You know, Eli does, does kind of get, when he gets mad at you, he lets you know he's mad at you for a while. And, and I had no problem making him mad, but I did hate, you know, those long moments where he decided he wasn't going to talk to me for a while. But, you know, we made through it uh, because he knows that, that I care for him and, and, and I know that he cares for me. And we were able to, to kind of grow our relationship and our, our teaching relationship with one another. And I think a lot of progress was made uh, through that. I'm, I'm really excited to see what he's going to be able to do at the next level. Um, I think that that's an amazing fit for him, uh, not only socially and, and academically, but on the football field, what he's going to be able to do uh, in that offense is exactly what he's great at, which is catching the football, running the football, and being a matchup issue for a lot of different people. Um, you know, you, you talk about the, the three amigos or the big three and him being a part of those guys on our team. You know, they're going to be, he's part of a group of guys that are going to go down in history for a long time at a school with a lot of history, and that's something to be proud of. Um, I'm very, very proud to be his coach, to say that I was his coach, um, and I look forward to staying in touch with him in the future and everything that he decides to do. When it comes to Eli, I could spend 20 minutes talking about his success as a human being before I would get to discussing his success on the football field. I've said this multiple times to Eli over the past three years of coaching him. But the thing that is truly most impressive about him is how he's just an awesome person. His dedication, hard work, and pursuit of success is inspiring. It not only pushed his teammates to be better, it pushed me to be a better coach for him. The success Eli had this year on the football field was immense. First team All-State, Fab 22 selection, Whitfield 6A Player of the Year, and more. He worked for and earned all of these accolades, but he never became too big for anyone or too big to put in the work. He truly is a great person, and that is what may, has made him a great football player. When Eli was named Co-Player of the Year by the Post-Gazette, many would spend the day patting themselves on the back and celebrating. What did Eli do? He and his fellow Co-Player of the Year went to visit a pediatric leukemia survivor to give him a signed Lebo football helmet to encourage his fight. This is the type of person Eli is. Now, while many of my family have served in the Army, thus making my family Army fans, I'll make sure that I'll be pulling for Navy the next four years because of you, Eli. Eli Heidenreich was one of the best two players in Pennsylvania this season. His finesse and playmaking ability thrilled spectators and terrified opponents. Oftentimes throughout the season, as Eli would break another incredible play, I would catch eyes on the sideline with a coach or player, and we would shake our heads in disbelief at his abilities. Even when these plays became the norm, it was still amazing. Behind the scenes, Eli brought a contagious optimism to practice. He was a positive role model, a spirited leader, and could often be seen encouraging or coaching younger kids. Eli represents the best of Mount Lebanon in football, and he will be greatly missed. We're proud of you, Eli. Good luck. So I'll start with my family. Um, I'll start with my mom. Um, you know, she's, she's been a tremendous help throughout my football career, you know, um, just constantly supporting me and loving me, you know, getting me up early for lifts or making me meals, um, you know, washing, washing my girdle every day. Uh, she's, she's been so much help throughout this, uh, throughout my whole football career. And next I'd like to thank my dad. Um, 
you know, he's, he's pushed me not only to become a better football player, but um, a better man as well. Um, you know, he's had such a tremendous impact in my life. And, uh, you know, I'd like to thank my, my siblings, Ezra and Ava, for always supporting me. Um, and next, uh, I'd like to thank the coaches. Um, I'll start off with Coach Razer. Um, he's, since he's been here, since my sophomore year, he's, you know, helped. Since uh, I used to be a little five foot seven, 130 pound sophomore, you know, he's developed me into a, uh, a strong football player. Um, you know, next I'd like to thank some of my positional coaches. Um, I'll start off with Coach Franck. Um, he's helped me develop my game as wide receiver. Um, Coach Nee, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's always supported me, you know, with tough love, but, uh, you know, it's helped me become a better defensive football player. And then there's uh, Coach Spieler and Coach Dennison, um, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, they've, you know, helped me become a smarter football player, um, helped me with, you know, technique. Um, and then lastly, Coach Saluga, my safeties coach, um, he helped develop, develop me as a safety, um, you know, and helped my, improve my game there. Um, Next, I'd, I'd like to thank my teammates. You know, they're, they're always there for you, always supporting you. And um, lastly, I think I'd just like to thank the, the boosters, you know, for always supporting us. So it was the playoff game against NA, and it was the first series when we were on defense. And um, I, I got a, a pick six, and I, I come running. I go into the end zone, come rounding the corner, and Coach Knee's there pointing up. And, uh, you know, he's not, not one to usually celebrate, but we run at each other and both jump up. And he probably got, you know, three inches off the ground, but it was, it was fantastic. That was, that was awesome. Um, and also, um, I'll definitely miss, um, you know, right after Coach Palco gives us a speech in the weight room, we all come together and pray before every game. And right at the end of the prayer, you hear the bells for Hell's Bells uh, kick in and, you know, you get goosebumps. It's, it's a special feeling and I'll miss, you know, that when those bells come on and looking around and seeing each other, seeing each other and, uh, you know, uh, getting ready to go down and run out, you know, that's a, that's a special feeling I'll definitely miss. Number 52, Dan King, guard. Dan King, in the essence, is an old school football player. A true student of the game, a fierce competitor, an absolute high-tempoed motor, constantly on the run. We actually had to get Dan to slow down sometimes. He was just too quick on his assignments. A true team leader, a true team captain. He is a guy that you want with you when you go into battle. Dan is an unbelievable football player and Dan will be surely missed. Dan has been a hard worker from the very moment that I met him. He has transformed his body through tireless work and guidance from Coach Riser. He is on the field a master of his craft. He knew the inside linebacker position inside out. To be honest, he is basically a player slash coach. Not only did he do great things on the field, but he also acted as a coach slash mentor to guys like Will Hartung and Beckham D every single day. He is the consummate team player. For example, moved to the O-line this season out of necessity. Finished the season at fullback once again out of necessity. He would do anything for the team. He is about as determined as a guy as I have come across, he absolutely would not be denied. I wish I could clone him. You are simply amazing, Dan. Thank you. I mean, first off, you gotta thank my parents. I mean, everything they've been through with me, coaching me, um, being at every game, trying their best to do everything they can to support me has been amazing. Um, I wanna thank everyone that let me lift at their house during the pandemic. I had, I had nowhere to go and um, it, was, it was amazing. Um, and I'd like to thank my extended family for being at every game and my coaches for making me the man I am today. There's nothing I'm gonna miss more than being inside, um, inside linebacker meetings, um, offensive line meetings, any type of meeting with any coaches, any, any type of meeting with any of my teammates. I mean, the things that goes on in there, sometimes you can't say them, sometimes you can, but it's, it's some of the best memories ever. I mean, I'll never forget Will Harton coming into a meeting that starts at 3.30, even though he has to leave at 3.35 just to be with his just to be with his guys for five minutes because he has physical therapy. I mean, it's, it's, it's the best thing in the world. On Thanksgiving Day, um, 
we had our first practice on Thanksgiving in, in years, and um, Coach Paco invited all these alumni out, and, and it, was, it was more than anything I could have ever imagined. I mean, seeing all these guys that I watched play and heard stories about my entire life come to watch me finally play, it was it's something that was just totally surreal, and I, I was honored to even be allowed to talk to them after, and it was, it was amazing. Number 50, James Klein, center. James was my offensive line leader. His overall qualities of highly intelligence, both in the classroom and on the football field, made him like having another coach. He uh, made all the offensive line calls and blocking assignments, and I gave James a lot of responsibility. We had to speak often, not only about practice and during the games, but he and I would speak about the offensive line in general. Whoever takes over this position next year will have huge shoes to fill. James will be surely missed. James Klein, I've known since he was born. Second generation Lebo football player, as his dad and I were teammates. The Klein family now has two Whitfield championships and one state title. Congrats on a great season, Jebber. Good luck next year. In the center of it all for our O-line was number 50, James Klein. He was the one identifying the defensive fronts, making the calls, and getting everyone right. To say he is intelligent is one of the biggest understatements of the season. His knowledge of our offensive scheme was unmatched. And when Friday nights and or Saturday afternoons came around, he was ready to go to war physically as well. His knees were battered and bruised, but he did not care. When the lights came on, he was on point and ready to throw down. Thanks for leading the charge, JK. Much respect. I'd like to thank my mom for, you know, always being there to push me, um, you know, to make sure that she brings the best out of me. And, you know, she's always there taking pictures, um, you know, she, so she can stay focused. And uh, it's really nice to have her on the sideline and know that she's watching. Um, I'd also like to thank my dad. Um, you know, he, he gave me an example of what it could be like, you know, to be the best. And, uh, you know, he helped me work towards that and, uh, you know, eventually surpass that. So that was, that was pretty cool. Um, I'd also like to thank Coach Marcellus, um, you know, helping out with a lot of technique work with the O-line, uh, trusting me to, with all the responsibilities that are required of the center. Um, you know, I'll never forget the time we spent on the T-bars with him. I'd also like to thank Coach Hathie um, for, you know, helping me in my move from tackle to center uh, and helping learn the new playbook uh, of Coach Spieler. Uh, that was really cool. Um, I'd also like to thank Coach Reiser for making sure that he was always able to get more out of me, um, you know, and always the most prepared for games that I have ever been in my life. Um, and then uh, finally, I'd like to thank Coach Palco for, uh, you know, he, he brought about the culture change. You know, he, he's willing to help with anything that you need. Um, he's always been there for me. You know, one of the things that I'll, I'll always miss is, uh, is going to wing nights with, uh, with all the O-line and, you know, some tight ends and QBs. Uh, you know, it's, it's just some time that away from football, away from school. You just get to hang out with your buddies, and uh, there's really nothing much like it. And then one of my favorite stories that I'll, I'll probably be telling for a long time is uh, the first time I ever got to meet Coach Palco, you know. Uh, Mr. Grogan gathered us all in one of the health rooms so Coach Palco could talk to us. And uh, as I was leaving, um, Coach Palco asked me about the sweatshirt I was wearing. Now the sweatshirt was, uh, it was a Whippeal Champion shirt from uh, when we were freshmen. And so he asked me about it because it didn't really specify that it was the freshman team on it, so he was a little bit, he was a little bit interested, and uh, you know, I got to tell him that, oh, it's for our freshman team, and I'll always remember one of the first things that Coach Palco ever said to me was, well, at least there's some champions around here, and you know, it feels really good knowing that after the time that we've spent with him, we got to make plenty more people champions around here, and we got to hang a new banner up. First off, I'd like to thank my parents for uh, trusting me and believing that I would find a way to still be a part of this awesome team 
even if not in the uh, normal way as a player. Second, I'd like to thank Coach Palco for keeping me around, willing to let me stay around and be a part of the team and the awesome group of guys that he's made around here. And third, I'd like to thank the team. Even though I'm not a player, they've still treated me as one and kept me apart and as a teammate. So I'd say my friends, freshman year, wrote me in a plane for my first time. Kind of, you know, loved the group of guys, loved, loved playing, played a lot. After we won our self-proclaimed Whippeal title with Coach Donati, I kind of remember feeling this is going to happen again in a couple of years. We're going to do this again on a bigger stage, on a bigger level. Jake Munoz. Jake had an awesome season for us, both on offense and defense at, at linebacker and wide receiver. Um, one of the most charismatic kids on the team, without a doubt. His energy that he can bring um, and, and his positivity that can, he can bring on a daily basis definitely sparks a lot of people around. Um, he's one of the best athletes on the team, without a doubt. Um, watching him run around at his size and the things that he can do, you know, we always tried to find ways uh, to get him on the field and find ways to maybe get him the ball and see what he could do from that standpoint. Uh, he made a huge growth as a, as a player and as a teammate from last year to this year. Uh, the whole summer was, a, was great working together. Um, and again, the joy that he comes in to every single day with, uh, he loves just playing. You know, whether it's scout team, varsity, offense, defense, he just loves being out on the field, running around, trying to make plays. He doesn't care who sees it, who does what. His blocking had taken amazing strides. Again, just in line with some of the other guys. Huge blocks downfield to make some big plays. And I know Coach Franck was so proud of the progress that he was able to make over the course of this season. I'm really going to miss Jake during the week and practice and all the conversations that we have on the side. Um, I'm going to miss talking to him every day about life, not just football. Uh, we made a great connection this year, just kind of you know, talking about different things and, and how we can grow as men. And, and if he ever has any questions, he knows that we're all, I'm always going to be there for him because uh, he is truly a great, great person and a great kid. And I can't wait to see what he decides to do next in his life. When I think of Jacob Munoz, the following words come to mind. Physical, perseverant, tough, and resilient. Whenever roadblocks presented themselves to Jake, he took a moment to assess, adjust, and power through to be a valuable contributor to the program. Whether it was Jake's contributions on the scout team by being a beast and repping as one of the opponent's best players, or being Johnny on the spot to recover a fumble and advance it to secure a win against Cannon Mack, or dominating block for Alex in the Whitfield Championship game to ensure that there was no doubt that Lebo was going to be Whitfield champions again for the first time in 21 years, Jake always brought value and made the program better. The personal growth Jake made this year was immense. It makes me feel that the best part of the Jacob Munoz story is still to be written. The way Jake has carried himself and grown over his time at Lebo makes him an easy person to pull for and support. I'll always be in your corner, Jake. Jacob Munoz was an important part of our state championship team. His physical presence and swagger demanded respect. On the field, he demonstrated speed, power, and a fighting spirit. We were always glad that he was on our side when it came down to battle. Off the field, Jacob was a great personality. He always had a smirk and something funny to say or an interesting way of looking at things. He kept things light while caring deeply about his program and his teammates. We will miss you, Jake Munoz, and we are proud of you. Good luck. Um, I'd like to start off by thanking my mom, my grandparents, and my dad. They were always there for me. They supported me when I would get my head down and lift me up when I needed it. And coaches, I'd like to thank Coach Frank, Coach Palco, Coach Reiser for always being there for me too. Um, just bringing me up when I would get down in my own head and teaching me stuff as I went on. Well, there's a lot of stuff I'm going to miss this year. First of all, being in the locker room with all the teammates, um, just goofing around, playing music, seeing Coach Need dance after football games. Um, but I think one thing I'm going to miss most of all is like, the summer grind. It just brought me, it made me faster, it made me learn a lot more. Being there with everybody just made it better. Just knowing that I wasn't the only one going through the struggle at the time. Just knowing that I had someone on my left and right to be there for me. 
and it didn't matter who it was. It was just someone was always there for me. Number 34, Charlie Pellegrino. Charlie, we missed you our first year at Mount Lebanon, that first season. And our opportunity to get to know you was during those winter lacrosse workouts. And I distinctly remember asking multiple players and coaches and teachers that, that we developed relationships with that, hey, is, it, is this Charlie Pellegrino? Is this for real? Is this kid for real? Is, is this a put on or is this kid as advertised? And resoundingly, overwhelmingly, what we got back was what you see is, is what you get. And we knew that we were on to something special. Uh, Charlie, you're a kid that's a, a great communicator, a deep thinker, and I would explain you as a, as a conduit to all the different uh, interests and personalities amongst the team. You're a guy that I know that's going to have a handle on all the good things and all the things that we need to improve upon both inside the realm of football and off the field. Um, and that's something that, that I very much value uh, as your input on things that we're trying to improve upon. Probably the biggest compliment, bud, I can give you, and I shared this with your dad after the Whippeo championship game, is that if, if our staff had to lift up and, and had an opportunity in a completely new area, a completely different state where we didn't know anything and nothing was established, and the caveat was we, we have to take one current player to help us go and establish a culture and an environment that – people want to be a part of, you'd be our guy, bud. I, I, I would choose you to, to go with us. And, and that's for many, many different reasons. But I know that if you were there by our side, you would help us implement things that, that are easy to explain in all those other intangibles. Um, very excited to know and, and have a, a relationship with you that, that I will be a part of your process in some capacity as you leave high school and then you continue on your journey. Appreciate you, my man. I am so happy Charlie decided to rejoin the football team going into his junior season. Sure, he is a very good player, but I just enjoy being around him more than anything. He has an infectious personality and a genuine care for people and a passion for life. Football-wise, he really elevated his game down the stretch. He put together a string of practices that were a very high intensity and set the tone every day. His teammates fed off his energy, and the rest, as they say, is history. Well done, Charlie. Uh, I first off want to start by thanking my family. Um, you know, just my parents being there, um, you know, obviously doing laundry and cooking and stuff like that, but just emotionally and physically asking how my day was, asking how practice was. Um, that stuff really went a long way, so I want to thank them and my siblings. Obviously, they supported me. Um, I also want to thank Coach Barry, uh, especially because he was really there for me, you know, times when I'm sad, I was able to text him and he was always sending me songs or just sending me positive messages. And he was just honestly uh, a, a great role, role model for me the entire season. I also want to thank Coach Need. Um, in between him yelling at me and getting in my face, even when little spits flying, you know, I just know it's all love and um, he, he just wants the best for me. So he, he's done so much for me, so I thank him too. Uh, I want to thank Coach Palk and Coach Riser because they really just showed us the way how to trust the process because um, there were times where it was hard but you know we trusted them and th they showed us uh, beautiful things and th they taught us a lot of life lessons that I'll take with me forever. I'd also like to thank Coach Chip because uh, I know all of us playing youth with him being a melon with the muddy field and the yellow Gatorade there's nothing like it so uh, I'd like to thank him. I'd like to thank our trainers too especially Mr. Tony um, helping us out all season and uh, Emily, Mr. B and CJ as well for doing all they do. Oh, I would also like to thank uh, the Boosters for all they do, just helping us out through the entire season, and the community just for showing so much love. So just some of my favorite memories leading up to game days. Uh, we, we always did wing night on Wednesday nights, and we'd go to Permanis or Dukes, and it was just awesome hearing all the guys, you know, talking about the game, talking about who we were playing, and just getting amped up for Friday. So that was always really fun. And then uh, Thursday night before the game, Coach Barry always sends us a a clip from a war movie just to get our mind right and get us excited and that was always super entertaining and we're just telling each other we love her and that, we love each other and that was really cool and then uh, before every game we always had the uh, pre-game meal at the Petra Gallows and Mrs. P would cook us something real good and oh it was awesome we all just had a good time there and getting ready for the game 
And also the atmosphere in the locker room was really special. Just those locker room conversations, especially right after school and waiting around for practice, we'd all just be messing around each other, having a good time. And uh, coming in on Saturday mornings too, after we did the pool workout, we'd all shower and get our sweats on and just be messing around before film. And th those are memories I'll just never forget, having fun with these guys. Number 55, Joey Peters, right tackle. Joey inherited the job of tackle with the injury to Cooper in the spring. And Joey took this job and busted his ass by working at his trade to improve his game. Joe is an absolute joker. He's a joy to be around. He's very competitive. And in every essence of coaching him was always a treat. Joe excelled at the position. He locked on, claimed it was his, and then made his mark. Joey will be surely missed. He is one of a treat to coach. Joey got his opportunity in game four versus Cannon Mack and never looked back. From that point forward, he was our right tackle, and a darn good one he was. I am so very proud of how patient he remained throughout his football career. His athleticism was on full display this season. He was so quick out of his stance that many defenders were beat as soon as the ball was snapped. And even when they knew he was coming, he was very physical. Joey, two times my man, much love. Joey's growth from his junior to his senior year was absolutely incredible. Um, definitely one of the, the biggest, biggest stories of our football team um, and our championship team here in 2021. You know, Joey going from a, a JV player and kind of a backup and, and a guy that, you know, we weren't really sure how much time he was going to be getting to being one of the best senior tackles in the entire state. Um, you know, being honored as a, an all-conference player, um, getting a lot of recognition in the media for what he was able to do on the football field once his opportunities came. Uh, he, he really, you know, starting in the summer, attacked the weight room, tried to become stronger. Um, and then as soon as we put the pads on, you know, showed everyone on the team and showed all the coaches exactly how tough he was going to be. And then really, really showing it. I think what really highlighted and what was Joey's coming out party was when you put the film on when we played Central Catholic in the regular season. You know, dominating another D1 guy across from him, similar measurables, another 6'6 guy. And then just being really physical and nasty and enjoying being really tough. Um, you know, we... we one of the biggest jumps, you know, on the team by far from one season to the next. And it all goes to the hard work and the mindset that Joey came with this season. It was awesome to watch him develop and change and kind of come out of his shell um, and, and, and really become more, more part of the team as the season went along. Uh, I'm really proud of his growth and what he was able to do. And I'm really excited to see what he chooses to do um, from a football sense coming up in the future. He, whoever gets him is going to get one heck of a football player and one rare talent um, getting, you know, a 6'6 tackle that's kind of slept on and under the radar who's actually really, really physical and really, really tough and is coming along and loving the game each and every day. He, he practices and gets better at it. So, Joey Peters made one of the biggest strides from his junior to his senior season on the entire football team. Although he might have been challenged with bigger names or bigger bodies, not once did he back down and not once did he falter. And because of this, not once did our offensive staff say, hey, we need to worry about Joey Peters on the right side of the offensive line to protect him. And the entire time, he did it with a smile on his face and a pep on his step. I look forward to seeing what Joey will continue to do as he moves past Mount Lebanon. Good luck. Uh, so beginning with my family, um, my parents in particular, I've got unconditional support from them through every step of the way. Uh, they've walked with me through freshman year, um, or through first grade, really. Ever since I started playing football, they were there for my highs and lows. I uh, had a bad game, come home, they'd make me something to eat. They'd wake up with me in the morning, make breakfast. Uh, just always wanted to hear about my day and how I did in football in general. Um, uh, the coaches, Coach, coach uh, Marcellus, a uh, gritty, gritty person, uh, just a great, great coach. You know, every single repetition he meant, he, he really really needed us to really mean every rep. And so that's a big reason of our success in the O-line, I think. Um, Coach Barry, a very personable guy. You can tell he wants to talk to you. He's a very funny person. It's so easy to 
have a con conversation with um, Coach uh, Smiley, just a, another very personable guy. He's got a great sense of humor. You could tell he really cares about everything you have to say. You could tell he really cares about you. Um, you could tell he just really loves you. He's just someone you could call at 3 a.m. and ask for a favor, and he'd be right there. Um, uh, coach Palco, uh, yes, he's a great X's and O's coach, but another reason why he's such a great coach is that he teaches you how to want to win and teaches you how to play together, which is such a big reason, I think, such a big deal for the football team. I think that's really what makes us, which gave us our success this year. And then Coach Reiser, uh, another man behind the curtain, just just always there for me, just a uh, very intelligent person, always knows the answer to what's going on with your body. You could tell him anything. You could say, I know, I remember I told him last year, I have shin splints. He said, okay, you could ice them. Here's all this stuff you can do. Uh, he's just, uh, you know, a lot of this would not be possible without him. Um, my brother, in particular, with my family, uh, he was there my freshman and sophomore year. He really got me to like football. Uh, he's playing at Wash U. I, I would like to play in college. Um, I'm like scout team. I would go up against them and we would get get into it. But it was always just it was all love. Uh, um, my teammates, senior class. Uh, I've known everyone since I started. I've known everyone since before I started. Uh, just that's what's so cool about Mount Lebanon. Um, I don't know every single person so well. Uh, the state championship was really fun. It's cool to play with that much emotion. Uh, it's, it's. I mean, that was that was like that was a feeling I've never had before. Um, just, I mean, it's it's cool because it's like I have something to always be happy about. <laughs> Number twenty-four, Louis Petrogallo. In order for a team to be successful, and in order for a team to win a championship. That team needs to have players like our number 24. Nothing was too big or too small for Louis to undertake or to work on or to improve. Louis was mature. Louis was eager. He handled his daily business like a true professional. Always trying to help a teammate, but always trying to learn and get better. Louis's work ethic and mindset allowed him to improve and become a valuable asset to our football team at both running back and at outside linebacker. Louis excelled on special teams as well. Good luck, Louis. Louis was a large piece of this football team this year, providing important depth to us at the running back position, um, especially and also at the linebacker position, always prepared always ready to step up and fill in when the time was needed, and which was quite often, and was always, always ready to jump in and do his job. Uh, his practice habits gave him the ability, when we did need to throw him in and spur the moment situation, situations, he was always ready to go, never thrown off and attacked every opportunity that, that he got, whether it was on offense or defense. Uh, his runs, and his ability to step in late in games and help finish games for us was a huge factor in preventing any of those teams um, what, that, was, that we had a lead on from kind of sneaking back in and giving us any trouble late in games. Getting first downs, getting touchdowns late was huge for us. Um, some of my favorite things watching Louie is just kind of him interacting with his brother, um, being a big brother, um, and, and being a fun and exciting member of this team. Always had some good jokes to crack. Um, and I know that I'm excited to see what he's got going on in the future for himself. Um, I know we've got some other, another little Petra Gallo up uh, in, in the youth program. So that name's going to be around for a long time. And, and Louie kind of set the standard for everybody else coming out and winning a whippy on a state championship uh, and scoring quite a few touchdowns on the road to that as well. So there are two attributes that Louis brought to the table during his Lebo career that saw him have individual success on the football field, and more importantly, truly helped this team win the 6A state title. Those attributes were selflessness and a willingness to do anything to help the team and program. I remember back in the summer when Louis moved to outside linebacker because we needed support there. Louis did not blink or complain. He took on this challenge and worked himself into the rotation to provide quality reps throughout the season. 
At running back, Louie made key runs throughout the season to spell guys and seal games. The two-touchdown performance against Baldwin to help us secure an undefeated regular season was memorable for a multitude of reasons, but primarily, for me, because Louie finally had a moment to celebrate. It was a game and performance that he had worked hard for and earned. It's easy to cheer for guys like Louie, because guys like this do all the little things right. It's guys like Louie that a state championship team needs to have in order to achieve those championship aspirations. Ultimately, like many guys on this team, Louie is just a great person, and the qualities that had him find success on the football field are the same qualities that have made him this great person that has an incredibly bright future. Louis Petrogallo is always having fun on the field. You saw that excitement and passion every opportunity he got to contribute, whether it was through special teams or whether it was going in as running back. You could tell that he truly had passion to help his teammates. Uh, I first got to thank my family, obviously, from my aunts and uncles to my grandparents, making it to every game they could, no matter the weather, and my siblings, and obviously my mom and dad, my, my dad teaching me how to play the game and making me fall in love with it and coaching me in Pee Wee. My mom, always, she always made us food before games and before practices and all that type of stuff. And then uh, the coaches, obviously, for everything they did, taking away time from their families to be with us to help us win, a football, win football games. And uh, just from the top on, from Coach Balco and Coach Razer really directing it all, and uh, all the way down to people like CJ. And then, um, obviously, uh, the boosters for everything they did. And then also um, the community, the way they came together was awesome. I, I couldn't have ever imagined like the community support supporting us like that. And then uh, I, I got to give a sh shout out to the Grays for uh, blowing the siren after the games and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to miss a lot, like just like hanging out in the locker room before practice, like uh, Alex and Tommy having rap battles, just joking around, or Coach Nee at the Coach Nee always saying the same thing at the end of a game. Just, that, just all the little things. It's, it's going to be fun like, to look back at in the future. Kyle Queeley. Kyle Queeley was half of Team Kyle along with Kyle Watkins. His senior year, he played defensive line. Kyle always gave everything he had to make us the best football team that we could be. During games, it was always a great thing to turn around to see Kyle with a big smile on his face asking, is it time for me to go in yet? And it always made me feel really good to be able to put in a kid like Kyle who gave everything he had to the football program over these last couple years and made us into the team that we had become. Thank you for everything, Kyle. I really enjoyed coaching you. Kyle is such a nice guy and a great teammate. His dedication and commitment to his team was quite evident over the past three seasons. He was always on point, ready, and excited to get after it. Whatever was needed, Kyle was ready to tackle the task at hand. From the weight room to field training to practice sessions, the Q man could always be counted on to be there to work hard, and to lead by example. Thank you, Kyle, for all of your blood, sweat, and tears. Much love. I'd like to thank all the people in the background, like Harrison Piddle, who do all these great films, who's filming this right now. I love watching the Piddle films and all that stuff. Of course, the boosters, all the parents, all the people that go to our games. I, I just really appreciate all the support the Blue Devils have done. Also, I would love to thank my teammates, upperclassmen that were there, and then, of course, the new generation coming up. It makes me proud to be a Blue Devil because it shows that stuff that I've seen and stuff like I've tried to do will be passed down. And just to a great group of men, you know, who try to make not even football, just make the world better a place. And, of course, I would like to thank my coaches. I have, all the coaches I've been playing since third grade. Uh, I have to thank especially Coach Dallas Rancho. I mean, you can't think of uh, young sports in general without saying that man's name. Uh, he's been so influential, and Coach Palco, when he came here, I can't say enough how he's changed the culture around here. You know, make me make people want to be Blue Devils. You know, make people really happy, and just be happy people are football. And you go into the lunchroom, there's banners saying you're undefeated and stuff like that, and uh, you go to the Skywalkers football, and like you can say this is now a football school because of him. Coach Reiser, also I got to thank, making me sound even more athletic than I was. I mean, before sophomore year, I couldn't really skip that much. I know that's like basic stuff, but he helped me how to skip, you know, the little things. You know, they're always saying to do the big things, you have to master the little things. You know, he helped me master, you know, simple things like skipping and going up two stairs steps at a time. And finally, the most important people I have to thank are my parents. You know, since I've been a kid, I've always struggled with speech 
writing and physical action. My mom helped me with like the more mental stuff. Every night, she could have been doing other stuff. Uh, she helped me do my homework. She made me go outside, you know, all that fun stuff. Uh, signed me up for like physical therapy and stuff like that and helped me so much. And my dad actually took me outside and did this stuff with me, you know. Just simple stuff like throwing a ball around, you know. It's those little things like Coach Balcoa says that mean so much more when thinking about it. You know, I can't. I, I would not be this man I am today. I would not be sitting in this chair when I'm without those two very special individuals. One of the greatest probably stories I have is a... Back in sophomore year, Coach Wells, Thunderdome. It was one-on-ones. It was me versus Kyle Watkins. You know, I, my nickname, he's been calling me, he called me was Stu Gotts, which is a radio personality. And he was trying to get me hyped up. He's like, Kyle, if you win, I'll give you your own TV show. In that moment, like, spit, I jumped in the air, clapped, and got on my three-point step, like, in unison. It's probably one of the most athletic things one could see. And then, like, the whole, everyone who was there paused for a second, started laughing, and I was just still in my stance, and it was just a great moment. And if you ask a lot of linemen about it, they, they'll remember that moment. Number seven, Jack Smith. When you reflect on the seniors and you talk about their high school careers and the interactions that you've had with them the last couple of years, um, you play that game where someone will say the jersey number or the name, and then you've immediately got to say the first thing that comes to mind. And when Coach Palco wrote number seven, Jack Smith, on the grease board in the coach's office, the first two things that, that came to mind without hesitation were, one, if I was in high school, I know without a doubt that I would be buddies with Jack Smith and I would be running with his friends group. And the second thing was is that I'm going to miss him. Jack, it makes me laugh to think about the, the conversations and the interactions that we've had the last couple of years and just the deep, genuine belly laughs that, that we've shared, just cutting it up and, and busting each other's chops. I appreciate that, man. You, you made this, this football thing that we do a fun thing to be a part of. It never felt like work based off of your personality. Um, and I know that you never took yourself too serious, while well, at the same time, we know that you were very serious about being successful. And when I say that I'm going to miss you, that there will be a void. Coach Nee and I have already talked about it. There'll, there'll be a void next year uh, when, when you're not around. And that's not a void that somebody else has to look to fill. Um, it's just something that, that gives you immense amount of credit to the person that, that you are and the person that you were for us to be around. So I know that you're going to close out this high school career very, very successful. And I know that you're going to attack your college experience with everything that you have and I hope in some way that we can continue to be a part of your process. Jack Smith, another second generation Lebo football player. I've also known Jack since he was born. Hey, Jacko, you have some hardware no one else in the family has. Make sure they hear about it often. Good luck at Harvard, buddy. Jack is someone who always has a good time. During practices and lifting sessions, you can see him dancing around and just enjoying himself. I think him being loose allowed him to play to his potential. We have a great defensive system that can sometimes be overwhelming. It's easy to overthink your job as a defensive player, but since Jack plays so loose, he never really froze up and instead just played football. He's a phenomenal athlete and has been a pleasure to coach this past year. I look forward to watching him in the spring during the baseball season and eventually following him as he continues his baseball career at Harvard. I'm uh, thankful for my parents uh, for supporting me all season. Um, definitely thankful for all my coaches, um, Coach Spieler for helping me with the offense, transitioning in, in the offense, um, Coach Dennison for, for being hard on me, making me work hard. Um, definitely Coach Need, um, just always being on me. Coach Vites getting me pumped up before the games. Um, and especially I'd like to thank my teammates. Um, I've gotten close with a lot of these guys. Um, and I can't explain how, how much these guys mean to me. Also, I'd like to thank Coach Barry for his, uh, his advice and his awesome stories. So some special moments from this year, I'd say um, definitely going to Permanis uh, Wednesday nights with the boys, um, the bus rides um, after, the, after a win, I mean, for instance, um, Peter's, after that win, we had the speakers blast in. Uh, we were all singing and dancing. It was awesome. It was, it's a, it was a crazy feeling. And also uh, team dinners 
um, just n night before a game, um, being able to eat with my with my friends and and the guys I'm gonna go to war with the next the next night. Um, it was it was pretty cool. Um, and finally, I guess just just messing with each other in the locker room, um, hanging out every day, um, just meant a lot to me. Number 21, A.J. Stetler. Any successful team or organization that I have been fortunate to be a part of has had members of that team that just love being part of the process. That's, that's A.J. Stetler. He's a kid that not only enjoyed the bigger, more upfront parts of the, the winning culture and the winning season, but he's a kid that loved all of the other day-to-day -day minute details. He loved the beginning of practice. He loved the end of practice. He loved the Thursday team meals. He loved the training part of that. Uh, AJ, I, I'll, I'll never forget when, when you and I had made eye contact when we looked at some of the guys that were on the field for kickoff team, and, and you had every opportunity to be like, man, I, I should be out there. But you were like, holy cow, coach, check this out. This is going to be awesome. And it really gives a tribute to your character as a person that you did everything that you possibly could. And I think that's important for you to understand that, that that did not go unnoticed. Your efforts and your genuine care and excitement for yourself and your team and the culture, your name's on that and it'll forever be on that. And for that, I say thank you and I wish you nothing but luck in the future. AJ Stetler, pound for pound, was one of our team's toughest players. He was a special teams ace who would be all over the field making plays. He was a credible safety who would fill the alley with big hits and came down with a big interception. Off the field, AJ was one of our team's great personalities. He was loyal, committed, and humorous. He cared about his teammates and program. He brought each day a positive attitude, spirit, and smile. The future is bright for AJ Stetler, and he will be missed. Good luck, AJ. We will miss you. Um, I'd like to start by thanking my mom, my dad, and my sister. Um, they've been supporting me more than I could have ever asked for through the years, and I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for the countless um, sacrifices that they've made through my, my entire life to put me in the most successful spot that they possibly can. Um, I want to thank the entire coaching staff for the hundreds of hours of hard work and dedication that they've put in behind the scenes to ensure we have the best game plan and film and really just daily schedule anyone here has ever seen. And Coach Palco specifically for not only teaching us how to be the best on the field, but how to be young, respectable men. And the lessons that he's taught us through the years will really carry us a long way. And I want to thank Coach Riser for not just, he just keeps us in the best shape any of us have ever been in. And his uh, training program and injury prevention program, he, he really is one of a kind. And um, a special thank you to Coach Chip because if it wasn't for Coach Chip D'Alessandro, I would have quit football four or five years ago and it, I would have missed a big part of my life. And last but not least, Mr. B. Big thank you to Mr. B because even Saturday morning, 6.30 in the morning, he never fails to greet you at the door with a smile and a handshake. I remember my freshman year, my parents would always tell me, make the most of high school, um, how fast it's going to go, and it's going to be gone just like that. And I would look at them like they're crazy. I have four years of this ahead of me. And freshman year, football, and coming in with my friends, and I look around, see everyone who I expected to see, and some more. And, and that first day of practice, just out on the field with the coaches, and everyone was just having a good time. And, it, it was like that day after day after day, and I never really thought it would come to an end. And it's crazy to see it come to an end, but even with it coming to an end, the memories that I've made in the past year of my life is something that I'll never be able to get again. Um, this really is a special group of guys that I've been able to share this past year with. And from team dinners to uh, morning workouts, lifting before the sun's even up with my guys. and. Uh, you know, it goes all the way back to the South Point field, field house doing all-in drills in January just to prep for the season. And 
all, uh, all the time that we spent together in the summer. I couldn't have asked for a better group of guys, you know. Um, we'll be in the weight room and I turn my back and I hear all this noise. I turn around and I see Coach Reiser pinning Sam Ward on the floor and no one knows what's going on. But yeah, like I said, a really special group of guys. I'm going to miss them a lot. Alex Texa, number five. In my 40 plus years of coaching, Alex is one of the best two-way players I have had the opportunity to share the field with. Alex was always locked in, he was always level-headed, and he was always grounded. Alex was a player with a high football IQ who at times seemed to be one step ahead of our opponent. The one thing that I'll always remember about Alex is not a certain play, and we know he had a bunch of those, but it was the way in which he practiced, the tempo at which he moved to make practice as game-like as possible. So on Fridays, he had already been there before it actually happened. Alex Tesco was one of the best two players in the state of Pennsylvania this season. His toughness, vision, burst, and athleticism will be long remembered in Mount Lebanon and beyond. Alex could break an amazing play at any moment, or he could carry the football for a steady seven yards a carry, five plays in a row, even when everyone in the stadium knew he was getting the football. Alex is an extreme competitor, and he would dislike missing even a single practice rep. He represents the best of Mount Lebanon football values. He was a leader and caring team player. His focus, desire, and abilities will be missed. We are proud of you, Alex. Good luck. So first off, I'd like to thank my parents, uh, my father, for pushing me every single day. Um, he's turned me into the man I am today, and, and mostly he, he's, he's given me the game of football. He's taught me it. He played in college, I'm um, in high school, and he's, he's truly, um, you know, got me into sports. And my mom, who, who's cared for me every single day, um, you know, she, she's at the house cooking. Um, you know, she takes care of me and my two sisters. Um, and she's an athlete herself, so she, she's, all, she's giving me the genes just like my father has. Um, and then secondly, I'd like to thank my ja uh, trainer, Jason. Um, he works at AmeriFit, and I've been training with him since fourth grade or so. Um, you know, he's got me in shape for every season of football. Um, and not only that, but he's taught me a, a life lesson that, you know, I've kept with my, with my whole life was, you know, hard work pays off. Uh, and that's, that's definitely true, I can say. Um, I'd also like to thank all the co coaches um, that, that have put hours and hours and hours in uh, every single day, um, time away from their family to, you know, build what we've, what we've built, you know, around Mount Lebanon football. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank Coach Riser and, and Coach Palco. They, you know, they've helped me so much, um, not only with life lessons, but, um, you know, with the recruiting process um, and building this, this culture that we have here at Lebo today. I'd also like to thank Coach Chip um, in the youth program. Um, just like my father, they, they've really taught me the, the game of football and what it means more than just the game. Um, life lessons, um, teamwork, trust, everything like that. I, I really, you know, owe it to those guys. Um, I, I think obviously the, my favorite memory is the state championship. Just the season we've had in general, it, it's been truly special. Um, you know, it's everything I've asked for. Um, coming into the season, I knew we were going to be good, but um, you know, 15-0 season, you know, that's not something you can bet on. Um, so that's super special. Um, I'd say my favorite memories just over the three years Palco's been here, um, I'd say definitely just the locker room vibes, just the dances, um, the music, the rap battles, um, just, just the memories, the meetings, everything, just in the locker room, um, you know, with, with kids I've grown up since uh, first grade. I mean, we've been playing football for the longest time, and just to be with, around those kids, is, is, it's definitely special. Um, and then I'd say another memory would be Saturday mornings, um, and, you know, Win or loss the, the day before, it's, it's definitely something special. Just the way things feel, the, you, know, the, you know, you went to war with your boys the day before and you're sore um, and you're tired, but, you know, just getting there and seeing, you know, Coach Paco's you know, bright face, all the coaches are there, you know, no, no matter how far they live away, um, it, it's definitely special. Just the Saturday mornings, just getting in the pool um, and then the finishing, you know, we, you know, you finish that week, you know, you're on to the next week. So that's definitely rewarding. Number 11, Sam Ward. Sam is a gifted athlete, but it just took some time to find the right spot for his talents to shine. 
And once Sam figured it out, he was a beast. He was always a player that had high expectations for himself, but he always wanted things to happen right now. Sam had a few setbacks as well. He had emergency appendectomy during the meat of the season, and he had to sit a few weeks, not one of Sam's strengths. But the new Sam, the more patient Sam, started coaching the other corners in the group during his recovery. And I think he saw another side to this journey, another side that helped Sam master his craft. Good luck, Sam. When Coach Palco came to Lebo, one of the mantras that he stressed and still stresses today is the concept of one bringing value to the program. Sam truly embraced this concept and brought value in several ways to the program that only he could. But one of the ways that he brought value that stands out to me is the edge he brought to our team. It did not matter the size, skill, or pedigree of the opponent. Sam was going to make that opponent's night a nightmare. He was never intimidated or overwhelmed. In practice, he was never looking to take reps off. He would call out our best receivers to battle against so that he and them could get better. He also was not afraid to talk about his success to his opponent or the receiver he beat in practice. But again, it was this edge and grittiness that made him successful, thus the team successful this season. Different roles need to be filled in order for a team to achieve the success we achieved this season. And Sam filled a vital role in the way he carried himself. Many could not fill this role. But Sam did, and he truly brought value to the program and left his legacy for years to come. Sam Ward was a dependable and talented quarterback who contributed greatly to the success of our defense. Pound for pound, one of our program's toughest players, Sam demonstrated pride, enthusiasm, and hard-hitting ability. Beyond the limelight, Sam was a team player who came to practice each day focused and dedicated. He carried a friendly disposition, but also a competitive spirit. He could easily tell you a funny quip and then be engaged next play and after the whistle fist the cuffs. Sam, you will be greatly missed. We are proud of you. Good luck. Long list of people I'd like to thank, obviously, but, you know, starting off, just like to thank my coaches, you know, starting off from youth football, Chip D'Alessandro. Uh, he was one of my first coaches starting off my football career. And then middle school, my middle school coaches, then obviously high school, Coach Palco, uh, Coach Nee, my defensive coordinator, uh, Coach Kalichi, obviously, DBs, and uh, yeah, all the other coaches. Mr. B, uh, I want to uh, say a special thank you to uh, Mr. B, uh, always there greeting me at the door with a handshake and, you know, always saying encouraging words. Uh, furthermore, I'd like to thank my mom and my dad. Uh, my mom, you know, during the season, I'd be all over the place running around. She'd always make sure I had my lunch packed, you know, had my clothes ready, had my practice stuff ready. And uh, she just always took care of me and made sure that, you know, through my crazy experience as a senior, uh, that I was, you know, all set and ready to go. Uh, also, I'd like to thank my dad. Uh, he's been with me throughout my whole football career. Uh, he's always giving me encouraging words, you know, coaching me up after the games. Uh, you know, cheering me on, you know, making sure that I'm not too hard on myself. So uh, for that, I just want to thank my dad as well. Furthermore, I also want to thank uh, the Boosters. Uh, they did an awesome job this year, you know, making sure we were well fed, well prepared before and after every game. And so uh, I just want to give a special thank you to them as well. Uh, also, I'd like to thank uh, CJ, one of our team managers. He also made sure that we were always prepared every game day, and uh, he knew that he was a behind-the-scenes guy, you know, wouldn't get, you know, all of the credit and stuff, but he stuck with it, and he made sure that, you know, we all had all of our stuff ready to go. <laughs> Lastly, I want to thank just the whole community of Mount Lebanon. Uh, I mean, we had this ride. It wouldn't be complete without you guys. And uh, I just want to thank the community of Mount Lebanon just for being at the games, you know, filling up the bleachers every home game, uh, making sure that there's a good crowd there, and uh, always encouraging us uh, throughout every game. Uh, I mean, there's just so many good memories of, 
you know, us in the weight room with uh, Coach Marcellus. He was one of our coaches. He was in there with us. And we'd just be pumping iron, you know, listening to some Highway to Hell, you know, some old school rock, just uh, throwing around some weight and, you know, just having fun while you're doing it. Number 62, Kyle Watkins, center. Kyle Watkins is a solid football player. When I met him, I instantly changed his position to center based on his skill set. Unfortunately for Kyle, the numbers game on the offensive line for playing time, he did not see much. He was an absolute solid scout team player, a joy to be around, did anything that I asked him to do, and did it with 100% commitment to the team. A selfless young man, a true teammate. He made us better by playing the scout team, solid snapper, called out our offensive line uh, calls, and became a true student to help us. He will be surely missed. Kyle Watkins. Kyle Watkins opened a lot of eyes in his senior year at Mount Lebanon. Coming into the season, you could see and look in his face that he was serious about what was going to happen. He was serious about practice. He was serious about his techniques. He was serious about everything. When he got into a game, he had bought into all the different techniques, things like turning your shoulders to avoid a block, to make yourself skinny so a lineman doesn't have hands on you. So when he gets into a game against Peters Township, he uses his techniques, sheds a block, makes a tackle for a loss. The eyes on the sidelines open up, and the kids were going nuts to watch Kyle Watkins play nose guard instead of Harv. It was a great thing to see, and unfortunately an injury kind of put a little uh, break on his senior year, but he returned at the end, and I'm so proud of him for everything he did and accomplished this year. Thank you for everything, Kyle. I want to thank my mom for obviously being able to let sign me up, let me play football, even though she's not always at my games. She This year she made sure that if she wasn't there, she was watching every game. And she went to Hershey, she went to uh, Norwin, she made the uh, trips to the big games that really counted, and she made sure to go to every game that I played in. Uh, I also want to thank Coach Palco uh, and Coach Reiser. Uh, Coach Reiser for allowing me to improve like strength-wise and endurance, and then Coach Palco for teaching me how to be a good person and play the game correctly. I'm going to miss you know, practicing at South Point the, this year. Um, I'm going to miss the games. JV was my favorite part. It was the most fun in the morning. N not as strict as the high school games, so you could get away with a lot more stuff. And then I, I love the practices. I'm going to miss uh, going against uh, my fellow linemen in the individual period and then going against them in team where I can actually get, hit the uh, other guys, the skill positions. Number four, Matt Wirtz, the quiet man, which means he's a man of few words. He almost appeared to be unassuming. But teams found out it wasn't a good idea to throw the ball his way, even if he did have waffle irons for hands. As the season progressed, he was playing at such a high level. He mastered his craft on a daily basis. He had such a great work ethic and always accepted his role on the team. Matt and his fellow seniors were on a mission to win a championship, and they accomplished it as well. Matt Wirtz was a talented and stable force at cornerback. He was a shutdown corner, a menacing presence who carried calm focus and big play ability. He saved the best for last as he came down with two of the biggest interceptions in Mount Lebanon history to help steal the state championship victory. Beyond game night, Matt was dependable and dedicated. A team player who was well liked and respected by his teammates and coaches. Matt was committed to his craft, cared deeply about his teammates, and loved his program. We will miss you, Matt, and we are proud of you. Good luck. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank my mom and dad. Um, I'd like to thank every single one of my coaches, especially Coach Palco. Coach Nee, Coach Reiser, and Coach Kalichi. Um, they've, I mean, they spend more time with us than they do their families. 
And I mean, for my parents wise, I want to thank every single person in my family. Um, my sister too, for coming to every game. Um, all my grandparents for coming out and showing their support every day. Um, I'd like to thank every one of my teammates as well for um, having my back when I needed it and coming every day and showing love to every single person on the football field. Having a pick in the state championship was honest, or two picks in the state championship was something I'll never forget. And just the feeling of running out onto the field as the clock hit four zeros was just something that really just, I, it's indescribable how it felt. So um, that's something I remember for the rest of my life. And another memory was, will be walking out to Hell's Bells, ringing in the background, walking out of that tunnel, looking at every, every single person in the stands, looking at every single one of my teammates, just, they're, I mean, the, the atmosphere is just unlike no other. I mean, I'll never forget the feeling walking out um, of that tunnel every single Friday night.